This week on Maker Update, an electric skateboard for cats, HP goes metal, a solenoid drum machine, flexible 3D printed masks, two light up ghost toys, a Zelda blade saw, and an all seeing skull. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing great. I'm super excited because I'm heading out to World Maker Fair in New York this weekend. But today, I've got a jam-packed show to get through, so let's get started with the project of the week. In a video that I'm surprised has not broken the internet, Kim Pimmel shows off how he designed this DIY electric skateboard for his cat. The project uses a single brush DC motor that belt drives a wheel-mounted hub. On the top, he's made a laser-cut acrylic control switch with an aluminum bar running through it. The extra brilliant part is that when you place a treat through a hole in the bar, the cat will paw at the bar to release the treat into the dish underneath it. The switch sends a signal to the Adafruit featherboard and motor wing combo under the board, which gently ramps up a short spin of the motor, pushing the board forward. For such a silly idea, it's beautifully executed and the video production is also top notch. Go check it out. Kim and Sophie Wong and their cat Mitty also dropped in on last week's Adafruit show and tell and talked about the project. I'll link to that show in the show notes. It's time for some news. HP recently announced a new 3D printer called the HP Metal Jet. As you might expect, it's a 3D printer that prints metal objects. It uses a process of selectively printing a binding agent onto thin layers of metal powder and then heating each layer to more permanently fuse it. Priced at around $399,000, it's definitely not something any of us will probably ever touch, but it's interesting to see HP's take on metal printing and who knows if they'll ever spin out a budget version for makers. I've got a ton of other projects to share. Colin Cunningham has a great one on creating this percussion board that uses small solenoids to knock into whatever you want. The project uses a Feather M0 board plugged into a Cricut motor board. The solenoids are triggered by incoming MIDI notes sent over USB, either from a computer or a MIDI controller. You're limited to just four notes and you technically can't play more than one note at a time simultaneously. That said, from watching Colin's demo, you can stack notes on top of each other so long as the timing is just slightly shifted. I love how it sounds. Over on Instructables, Penelope Bolnick is back with another great 3D printing on fabric project. This time, it's a guide on creating these masks that are 3D printed on tool fabric. From a distance, the loose weave of the fabric looks almost invisible in contrast to the 3D printed design that's on it. It's a very cool effect and great timing to riff on this idea for Halloween. Penelope includes four of her designs that you can try out and is also selling some on Etsy. Speaking of Halloween, Greg Zumwalt has two new 3D printing toy ghost projects. One is a motorized ghost that glows and spins using a geared DC motor. The other is a ghost that creates a snug fit over, these, over those battery powered flickering tea lights. The Ruiz brothers have created one of the most ambitious 3D printed prop projects yet. It's a motorized blade saw from the game Zelda Breath of the Wild. A circuit playground board and cricket motor board drive the motor in over 200 NeoPixel LEDs. The 3D printing is intense with 41 separate design files to print using a variety of filaments and techniques. It's way off the deep end for me, but I love seeing these guys work and challenge themselves and the payoff is super cool. For something I'm more certain I can actually handle, John Park has a guide up on how to embed a hollow wing board and a PIR motion sensor into the eye sockets of a plastic Halloween skull. From a distance, it seems like an average skull, but when you approach it, the motion sensor triggers the eye animation to come on. You'll also notice how the pupil dilates depending on how much light is in the room. John is using the light sensor built into the Halloween board to pull this off, and it adds another layer of creepy to this thing. I also just love how the PIR sensor just naturally looks like a clouded over eyeball and would be a good fit for other interactive skull projects. It's time for some tips. Jeremy Cook has a pair of new videos looking at some hacks for working with the beloved Octoprint Raspberry Pi add-on for managing 3D printers. One video looks at how he added a camera mount to his system for recording time-lapse 3D printing videos with Octoprint. The mount uses a Raspberry Pi camera at the end of a flexible coolant hose, and the hose mounts to a 3D printed base that zip ties to his wire shelving. The file for the mount can be downloaded from an Instructable I'll link to in the show notes. Jeremy also did a video on making a remote power switch that allows him to turn his 3D printer and lighting on and off using Octoprint. That one had some trial and error, but worth checking it out if you want to avoid the same problems. 
Bob Claggett has a new bits video exploring the ins and outs of angle grinders, attachments, and applications. Lone Soul Surfer has an instructable on how to fix or replace corroded battery terminals from old electronics. On Thingiverse, Frank's 3D shop posted this file that gives you a quick place to hang up your digital calipers. I printed one out for myself and it fits my cheap calipers like a glove. On Tested, there's a pair of articles from Terry Dunn on working with LiPo batteries and understanding how LiPo discharge rate works. And then over on the Cool Tools channel, I've got a video up showing off three cordless tools from Ryobi that I actually think are worth picking up even if you're not already a Ryobi user. Maker Fairs this weekend. We have World Maker Fair in Queens, New York. There's also Shreveport, Louisiana, Prince George, British Columbia, Kathmandu in Nepal, Akron, Ohio, and the Champlain Mini Maker Fair in Vermont. If one's near you, don't miss it. Also, at World Maker Fair in New York this weekend, if you want to catch me, the one place I know I'm scheduled to be is interviewing the Backyard Scientist on Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Content Creator Stage, so come say hello. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes sent out to you automatically every week with a few bonus projects thrown in there. And I volunteer to do the show because I love doing the show, but I also hope it's something that makers like you can support. And you can do that using the Patreon link down here for as little as 25 cents a show. All right? I won't see you guys next week because I'll be flying back from New York, but I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.